All right. So before I jump into going over the types of products that you have, let's just review the types of reactions that there are, because honestly, if you don't, actually, I'm going to do this here. If you don't, um, hang on. All right. If you, I'm going to have you guys look at this screen. If you guys don't know the type of reactants that you have and the type of reactions that you have as option, then it's going to be really hard to predict what their products are. So let's just review. There were five types of reactions that we talked about last week. The first one we talked about was synthesis or combination. In order to recognize a synthesis or combination, you have two single things. So single could be a single element, usually a metal. Or do you remember your diatomics that I wrote on the board last week? What do your diatomics spell out? Yeah, ring off. Remember, Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, F2. Those are the seven things that can't exist on their own. There has to be two of them. So that can still be considered a single thing. So when you have a synthesis, you have two singles. And what do they do on the right-hand side of the arrow? They combine together. Good. They form one single product. All right. The other one we talked about after that was decomposition. How many reactants are in a decomposition reaction? Just one. And it will give you one compound. It has to be a compound. If not, it wouldn't be able to be broken down any further. So it has to be a compound. So in a decomposition reaction, you see one reactant. Sometimes it'll say that reactant plus heat. It'll actually say the words plus heat. Or sometimes it gives you the arrow with a little triangle above it to indicate that there was heat added. But either way, that's decomposition. The next one we talked about was combustion. Combustion is a hydrocarbon, some kind of H and C compound that's reacting with oxygen, O2. When those react, your products are the same always. What are your two products for combustion every single time? H2O. H2O and carbon dioxide, CO2, H2O and CO2. So that type of reaction is the easiest to predict because it's the same product every time. You have a single replacement, a single replacement, you have one single thing. Again, it can be a metal or it can be one of your diatomics, non-metal, or, and then you have a compound. So part of that single replaces part of that compound and we'll do that here in a little bit. And then the last type we have is a double replacement. You have two compounds at the beginning. So before we even get into predicting, I'm gonna do one through seven. I'm just going to go over really quickly the types of reactions that they are so that you guys can help predict based on the type that they are. Because until you identify the type of reaction, you won't be able to tell me what the products are supposed to be. So look at number one was done for you. It's double replacement. And you know that because you have two compounds. Look at number two. Number two is a what type of reaction? I heard it. What is it? Synthesis. All right, the first one is synthesis. Why is it synthesis or combination? Why? I have two single things at the beginning. AL is a single thing and CL2, that's a diatomic. That's considered a single thing. So that would be a synthesis reaction. Okay, look at number three. What type of reaction is number three? Good, double replacement. How do I know that? You have two compounds at the beginning. It's the only type of reaction with two compounds. FeCl2 is my first compound. KOH is my second compound. Okay, what about number four? And what's that type of reaction? Combustion. How do I know it's combustion? I have a hydrocarbon and oxygen. Good. So C2H4, there's my hydrocarbon, H's and C's. And O2, there's my oxygen. So when you have those two together, it's combustion every time. What about number five? Good, double replacement again. You know because it has two compounds right at the beginning. Al2SO43 is your first. PBNO32 is your second compound. All right, number six, what type is it? 
Good. Single replacement this time. I know that it is single replacement because I have one single thing. In this case, it's BA. And I have one compound, MGI2. Okay, it's only one with both a single thing and a compound. And then lastly, number seven that I'm going to do today, CaOH2 plus heat. What type of reaction is this one? What? Good. Decomposition. Combustion would have been a hydrocarbon only, C's and H's, and oxygen that's not a good one. So decomposition, I have one reactant. And this one just happens to say plus heat. So that's going to break that composition or that decomposition reaction down. All right. So again, the first part of this is just identifying the type of reaction that it is. You have to look at the reactants to determine that. So now let's take this step by step. We're going to tell me what's on the other side, the product side, based on the type of reactions that you have. All right. So let's take the very first one that we have to do. Set this as number two. I have AL plus Cl2. What happens in a synthesis reaction? They come together, right? So that means I am going to combine Al and Cl. Those are my two that I have. I'm going to combine those. Listen, all of these apply when you have an ionic bond. You have to switch your, your charges every time. This is really the culmination of really what we have been doing um, really since Christmas at this point. So Al is where on your periodic table? Group three, so what's it charge? Plus three. <coughs> Cl is where on your periodic table? Group seven, so what's it charge? Minus one. So now that I know my charges, I'm going to bring them together. How many Als do I have? Just one. How many Cls do I have? Three, okay? I want you to look because what did I not do with Cl2? Did I just bring it over right as Cl2? No, because Cl cannot be by itself. It has to be Cl2, but it's not by itself on the right-hand side. It's being combined with aluminum. So you have to look at the charge. So when you're doing this, now this is not a balanced equation. This is why we balance, because when atoms recombine together, Sometimes they combine in different ratios. Well, the reason for that is, is when you have different charges, they have to balance each other out. So if I would have just brought Cl2 over, that would not have made any sense because it doesn't need two with aluminum. It needs three. Okay? So this is why we balance. So now we're going to go through, now that we have our new compound, we switched our charges. That's where AlCl3 came from. Let's balance it. How many Al's do I have on the left-hand side? One, how many CLs do I have? Two. Now let's look on the right-hand side. How many ALs do I have? One, how many CLs? Three. So our aluminums are balanced, but our chlorines are not. I have a two and a three. There's nothing I can multiply by two to give me three. Nothing I can multiply by three to give me two. So what do two and three both go into? Six. So what can I put in front of the one on the right-hand side to make it six? A two. So if I put a two there, how many chlorine do I have now? Six. But what else did I change? Aluminum. How many do I have now? Two. Okay. Now go to the left hand side. Let's make the left hand side chlorine six. What do I put in front of that Cl2? A three. So that makes my chlorine six. But what else is still not balanced? Al. That's an easy fix. So what can I put in front? Is everything balanced? That is a synthesis reaction where you predicted and then you balanced. Okay, so I brought them together, I looked at their charges, and then I balanced them out. Okay, how'd that go? Not bad? Let's do it again. All right. Second one is double replacement. So in a double replacement, the cation, remember the cation is the very first one. So in this case, it's Fe and it's K. Okay, what do your cations do in a double replacement? They switch places, good. So Fe is with Cl on the left-hand side, but it's now going to be with what on the right-hand side? OH, yeah, so I've got Fe is now going to be bonded with OH. And then K is now going to be bonded with what? Cl. 
Good, and I'm not gonna do the two, I'm just gonna do CL because it's now gonna be with K. Make sure that your K comes first. Why? Because it's a metal, cations, positive, whatever you wanna think of it, it always comes first. I'm gonna do KCL first. So what is K's charge based on where it's at on your table? One, what's CL's charge? Negative one, so what's plus one, minus one give me? KCL, one of each, okay? Now, this is where it's so imperative that you understand how this works. Fe is where on your table? It's a transition metal. How do I know what charge it is? I have to look at how it's bonded. I don't know Fe's charge. I can't look up there and see what it is. I have to figure it out. So we're gonna go back to what we know about multivalent. I know it's positive, I'm gonna make that an X. Okay, I don't know what it charges, but I'm going to use CL to figure it out. What is CL's charge? Negative one. Negative one. All right, so this is where we do, okay, what's X times one? X, right? Now let's look at chloride. What's one times two? So what is the charge of iron? Plus two. Okay, I was serious when I said this stuff doesn't go away. All right, so now I have Fe. I know it's a two plus, and I use the Cl two to help me figure that out. And then OH is a polyatomic. Do you guys know what OH's charge is? Negative one. Good. So now that I know their charges, I just crisscross them. How many Fe's do I need? Just one. How many OH's do I need? Two. And what does OH go in? Parentheses. Good, because I need two of them. So there's my two new products. My first ones just flip flop. They have new partners, and because they're new partners, have different charges. I have to go through that whole process. Is this balanced? Nope. So let's balance it. Wait, why do you get how do you get negative one for OH? It's a polyatomic. That's a fixed charge. You can look at your chart for that. You wouldn't be able to look on your table for that. Like it's on your polyatomic sheet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go through and balance. How many FEs are on the left-hand side? Just one. How many are on the right-hand side? One. How many ECLs on the left-hand side? Two. How many on the right-hand side? One. How many Ks on the left? One. How many Ks on the right? How many OHs on the left? And how many OHs on the right? Two. I chose to keep OH together. It's a polyatomic that stayed the same on both sides, so I kept it together. If you like breaking it up into individual O's and H's, please, that's fine. Do whatever is easiest for you. All right, so now let's go through Fe and K are the only ones that are balanced, so let's look at CL. I have two on the left and only one on the right, so what can I put in front of the CL over here? A two, okay, but I gotta put in front of the whole thing, so I change CL to two, but what else do I also change here? Okay, yep such as the dance with balancing. So I changed both K and CL. So CL now has two, K now has two. So if I go to the left-hand side, okay, I need to fix K now. So what can I put in front of K? Okay, so that gives me two on the left-hand side. Now my K's are good, but what else did I change? OH, but that was for the better, right? Because now when I change that one, I was able to balance. So is everything balanced at this point? Mm -hmm. You guys hanging in there? You doing okay? Is this feeling easier as we go through it? Kind of? Okay. All right. Next. Number four. Number four is combustion. This is the easiest one to predict products. Why is it the easiest one to predict products? Because the products are the same every time. So when you have a combustion, you have a hydrocarbon. In this case, it's C2H4 is my hydrocarbon, and it's burning in the presence of oxygen, which is O2. So what are my same two products every time with combustion? Carbon dioxide and water. And what's nice is I don't have to worry about, both of those are covalent bonds. I don't have to switch charges, okay? I don't have to worry about charges. I just have to know that CO2 is carbon dioxide and H2O is water. So combustion always ends up CO2 and H2O every time. Every time. Yep. 
So those are the easiest ones to predict because you already know what their products are going to be. All right, now our favorite part. It's not balanced, okay? But let's balance it. So we have C's, H's, and O's. I thought you just said it was clean. Well, I know the products. I don't. It's not balanced. Did you mean clean as in it's? No, that would be nice though. <laughs> All right. How many carbons on the left? How many on the right? How many hydrogens on the left? How many on the right? How many oxygens on the left? How many on the right? Three. I've got two here, CO2 and H2O. I got oxygen in both compounds, so I gotta add them together. So two from the CO2, one from the H2O gives me a total of three. Oh, no, sorry. CO carbon dioxide. All right, so what I want you guys to do, generally I save oxygen for last. It's a pain in the butt a lot of times, but if you focus on other things, sometimes it'll fix itself. So let's just start with uh, carbon. What can I put on the left or the right hand side to make it a two? A two. So I changed carbon to two. What else did I change? Oxygen has how many now? So how many here? Four plus how many here? So I have five total. Four plus one gives me five right now. Okay. So my carbons are good. H's and O's are not. So what can I put? The left hand side has four H's, but the right hand side only has two. So what can I put in front to make that hydrogen a four? Two. So if I put a two in front, now hydrogens are four. What else did I change? Oxygen, how many here? Four plus how many here? Gives me a grand total of six. I have two times two gives me four plus Two times one gives me two. Four plus two is six. Now this looks a lot easier because what do I have to put on the left hand side to make this two a six? Three, right? If I put a three in front, is everything balanced? So one, three, two, two. Those are my coefficients for that one. Okay? All right. I'm going to do two more. I'm going to skip number five because number five already did a double replacement. Let's do number six with single replacement. So single replacement, I have a single element, BA, and a compound, MGI2. BA is my single. I want you to look on the periodic table. Where is BA? Group two, is it a metal or a non-metal? Non-metal. It's a metal. It's a metal. So what that means is if it's a metal, it can only replace the metal in the compound. So if I look at my compound, is Mg or I my metal? Mg. So because metals can only replace metals, that means that Ba and Mg are going to flip-flop. Okay? So now Ba is bonded with what? I. They kicked MG out. Now BA and I are together. And we already know that BA is in group two. So it has a plus two charge. I has a what charge? Good. So I have a plus two and a minus one. So crisscross them. How many BAs do I need? One. How many I's do I need? Two. Listen, when I replaced BA and MG, I still have to look at their charges. That's where BAI2 came from. Now MG is off by itself. The last thing you want to ask yourself, is the one by itself a diatomic? Is MG a diatomic? Nope. So it's fine by itself. If it was a diatomic, I would have to add the two there, but it's not. MG is not a diatomic, so I'm going to leave it at MG. Okay? How many BAs on the left? How many BAs on the right? BAs are good. How many MGs on the left? How many MGs on the right? MGs are good. How many I's on the left? How many I's on the right? So is it already all balanced? Yes. This one's all balanced already. Is that your clean? Yeah, that one's already done for you. All right. Last one that I'm going to do for today. You guys have hung in really well. 
So decomposition, now guys, listen, decomposition is a little bit more difficult because it doesn't always split right down the center. It's not always gonna just break up half and half. So I will either tell you what the products are or maybe I'll give them to you in word form. So in this case, I'm just going to do, you have, I'm just gonna tell you what they are. And again, with decomposition, if it's not a clean break, I'm just gonna tell you what it is. So you're going to have Ca and O together, and then you're going to have H2O. So H2O obviously is a covalent bond. I don't have to worry about charges there. But Ca and O, I do have to look at charges. What is the charge of Ca? Two. two. It's in group two. What's the charge of O? Negative two. It's in group six. So I've got a plus two and a minus two. So what does that mean? They already cancel out, so I just need one of each. So I have CaO, there's one of my products, and then I have H2O, there's my other product. So again, I will tell you what your products are if they're not just a clean break. Had this just broken up into calcium hydroxide, that would have been fine, but that's not how this one did, so I told you. All right, how many CAs on the left? How many on the right? CAs are good. How many o, uh, H, no, O's on the left? Two. How many on the right? One. Two. So my O's are good. How many H's on the left? Two. How many on the right? It's already balanced. Okay, those are nice ones when they're already balanced for us. Okay, so listen. This is going to be involved with your lab. You guys have to know the type of reaction that you are looking at before you tell me what the products are because you have to know what those reactants are going to do with each other. So if you can identify the type, that's half the battle. And then the other part is bringing together your bonds. Listen to me carefully. You have to know charges. You have to be able to put them together. You have to, have to, have to. There is no other option, okay? So if you would like to, I'll probably go over a couple more of these tomorrow morning right before the lab starts just to kind of make sure we're okay. If you want to try a couple more on your own, you're more than welcome to. It's not homework. Okay. I can go over a couple more on my or um, with you tomorrow. But for now, I wanted to make sure that you guys had a good, a good idea. Do you guys feel like overall this is not too bad? Yeah. Not too bad? Okay, good. Some more practice tomorrow. Some more practice tomorrow. And you'll get practice with your lab. So that'll be... That'll be good. Five? All right, guys. Nice job.